Okay, dear student, let's see what is there in this question. Planets X and Y orbit the same star. The average distance between the planet X and the star is five times greater than the average distance between the planet Y and the star. Okay, first of all, the students, those who are getting confused, like why are we talking about a star and planet or something? So just understand this. Sun is an example of a star and two planets means like they're talking about two planets moving around the sun. It, it can be Earth and the Mars. Simple. So there are two planets which are revolving around a star. In, the, in our case, the star is sun, but it could be any other star also. So they're literally talking about the distance now. So the average distance between the planet this is five times this. Before we move into this further, let me tell you what is Kepler's law. So Kepler's law is a topic that has been added into the new syllabus, but it was not that very popular in the old syllabus, I can say. So Kepler's law uh, now is completely done and um, uh, we would be getting questions on this, no doubt about it. There are three Kepler's laws. The Kepler number one is that all the orbits of the planet around the sun, they are elliptical. Point number two is about the uh, velocity of the planets. So we would be discussing it later. And the point number three, which is important for this particular question is that the square of the time period is directly proportional to a cube, where a is the semi-major axis of the orbit. Like let's say this is the ellipse and this is the sun. This is the sun. So the maths students, um, they would be able to understand what is happening here. This is the ellipse. Ellipse is having two focus here. Now this is F1. This is like there will be another focus which is F2. But F2 is not having any astronomical body there. So it's only sun here. And the planet is moving around along this elliptical path. Now, if I divide this ellipse into two parts, so like four quadrants like this, this is known as major axis. And this is known as minor axis. Now, the half of it is called semi-major axis. So this distance is called semi-major axis, which is A. And this is called the semi-minor axis, which like the distance is taken as B, but that is not important for us. In this case, we are only concerned with A. So that is the most important thing. So that is what they have given. It is the average distance between the planet Y and the star. So average distance between the planet and the sun is taken to be this semi-major axis and that is a now the Kepler's third law says that t square is directly proportional to a cube and accordingly the orbital time period for x so it means that we want tx divided by ty whole square will be equal to the distance of the planet x from the star and the distance of planet y from the star and the ratio and then we would be taking cube of it so ax divided by ay now it says that the average distance of planet X is five times the distance of Y. So AX is five times this. So this can be canceled like this. It means it will become 125 and the orbital, this is TX divided by TY square. Now, what do we want to find? We want to find the ratio of orbital period of X to Y. So we have to just take the square root here so it will become 125 square root or you can say 25 into 5 so that will be 5 root 5 like that but uh, they have even given different uh, um, variation so what we can say is 125 can be written as 5 cube okay and then the square root is there so it is 5 raised to power 3 by 2 so d will be the correct answer 1 by 2 is written as the square root and five cube is like five cube. So the student, those who are still getting confused, it is like this. So this can be written as cube root, uh, square root of five cube. This is what they have done. And the answer for this question will be five, for, will be D. So uh, this topic is Kepler's law. There is another method of doing the same question. And that is by using the concept of the orbital velocity. We will first find the orbital velocity, then we will divided by the 2 pi r we will create the kepler's law and then we will apply these conditions here but we need not to go there we need not to get there because now kepler's law is added into your syllabus so that is why you can directly use this formula in some other question we would be doing that method also no problem but as of now 
D is the correct answer. Let's see what is given in the mark scheme. And yes, according to mark scheme also, the answer is D. Okay, dear student, thanks for watching. This is Professor Varun. Please join the YouTube channel if you want to enjoy the lecture series for all of the syllabus. All the best. Bye.